Asus refused to fix this ROG Ally, claiming that it had liquid damage. The seller that sent this to me said that there was never any liquid damage, but he did try to make a few repairs himself that didn't end up working out, which is why he sent it to Asus. In this video, I'm gonna take this apart, see if there's any liquid damage, and see if we can fix it. The viewer that sent this to me said he tried to fix his micro SD card, he tried to reflow the components by applying solder paste flux and heating it up. He then proceeded to close everything up and turn it on. He said that did actually work, but then he restarted the device and it never came to life again. Asus said they wouldn't fix it under warranty, but they would fix it for $867. I'm curious to see if there's any evidence of any sort of liquid damage once we get this opened up. Now I don't see any evidence of liquid yet. I can see that this thing's been taken apart. I started taking it apart already, but I want to check and see if it'll charge with an SSD installed. There's not currently one there. So I don't think that matters. I don't think that would keep it from charging, but I do want to check just to be sure. Storage device installed. Now the thing with ROG allies is you have to cover this sensor right here. This is a light sensor and that tells the system whether the back cover is off or not. So I'm going to cover this and that'll make it think the cover's on and then plug it in and see if we get a charge light. Okay, covering this, and no lights, no nothing. Doesn't power on, just nothing happens at all. It's like the battery's unplugged, which I don't think it is. No, it's not unplugged, but... Okay, so we need to take this thing apart further, see what's going on on this board, or... I mean, it could be just a battery issue, I don't know. Let's take it apart, though, and figure this thing out. And with the battery out, still no clues. Get this SSD back out, and get the thumbsticks and the boards off, the fans out, and then we'll see if we can see anything from there. Okay, one thumbstick module is out. Gotta say the seller of this seemed to do a pretty good job overall. I mean, other than the fact that, you know, it's not working. But what I mean by that is there's not a bunch of broken ribbon cables or missing screws or anything like that. So really not too bad overall. This ribbon cable was unplugged from the board down here, so we need to make sure and plug that in. Speaking of the seller doing a really good job. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it, it's possible I just pulled it out when I was pulling that thumbstick out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so far, Everything is looking just fine. I don't see any evidence of any sort of liquid damage. This is the SD card slot, so I'm guessing maybe the other side might show us something. Okay, and now we need to unplug everything. Power button. I've forgotten to plug that in before. Okay, how are we looking? Okay, this seems pretty good. And it is coming out. Okay, and there we go. All right, now let's see what we got for liquid damage. So right down here is the SD card area, this whole area, and I can definitely see some kind of residue on this chip. But other than that, like, there's just nothing. I don't see any, like, liquid damage indicators or anything on this board. So as far as I can tell, the only reason they would say that there's liquid damage on this board is because there's a little bit of residue on this chip. Let's get under a microscope and take a closer look at this. Okay, so this is the SD card slot right here, and this is the back side of it. So this is why they were saying it's liquid damaged. While I can say that there's little bits of what looks like probably flux residue, there's absolutely no corrosion or anything like that on this board. So for them to say it's liquid damage, I'm just not sure I'm on board with that. Now it is true that the person I bought this from did mess with this. He said he heated it up to reflow these components and that actually got the SD card working at least for a while. So, I mean, technically he did mess with the inside of it, 
But at the same time, I can't say that I would say this is liquid damaged. I can say there has been some liquid on the board, meaning flux, which is kind of like meant to be on boards. I mean, at least enough for to do, you know, soldering and stuff like that. Normally you've cleaned flux off, but it also usually doesn't do any damage for it to be there. So tell me what you think in the comments if Asus should have denied him a warranty on this or whether you think they should have went ahead and fixed it. Now that we've explored that a little bit, we've got to figure out why this thing isn't working. One of the things I notice is there's this random capacitor that's like off center. Oh, oh, that's like broken off. Okay, um, well, I mean, that could be a problem. I mean, it, it also might not be, but that could definitely be an issue. So the problem is that that pad probably under there is probably torn. That being said, we need to explore that. I'm gonna get a soldering iron and see if we can just re-solder this guy. So I'm gonna come in just a little bit of flux. That's just gonna help the solder flow. Now I've got our fume extractor turned on. Our iron is nice and warm. Let's see if this thing will solder. So if that pad is torn, there's a good chance this isn't gonna solder down correctly. Also, how did this happen? That's what I wanna know. I feel like, I mean, obviously something broke it off, but that's kind of strange. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, that capacitor seems to have a broken pad on one side. So first thing we're gonna do is remove it, try to remove it without breaking the other side pad. You know, let's get some flux on that thing. Got flux on one side, but not really the other side. Not there. Close enough. All right. Now we should be able to desolder this side. Just like that. Okay, now we can see what we're working with. Hey, let's try and put some solder on that. See if it'll stick. Okay, we got solder to stick there. That's good news. All right. Let's try and re-stick this capacitor back on here. Yeah, see, there's something going on with this thing. It refuses to stick down. Oh, actually, okay, let me try my larger iron. Maybe I can get, maybe if we bring a little bit more heat in here, that'll work. Nope. Okay, so we gotta figure out what's going on with this board and why nothing's sticking. Let's bring some more flux in. Okay, that, that seems to be working fine now. Also, we gotta get the solder off of these pads that I accidentally soldered together. Let's get some Get some solder wick on here. See if we can wick, wick enough of that up to get it out of there. There we go. Okay, now <laughs> back to our original project. See, it looks like we've got solder sticking there, but when we go to put the capacitor on, it doesn't like it. could just have a broken capacitor too. That is always possible. Ah, got it. Okay, that took a while. Let's make sure that's nice and strong. Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'm not sure why that took 
so long. It just didn't want to stay on there, but sometimes that's just how it is. So I checked the capacitor to make sure it wasn't broken. I checked the pads to make sure they were good. That's why I knew it was just a matter of time and trying to get that thing on there correctly. Now, is that the only problem with this motherboard though? That's what we got to figure out. Let's take a look at the rest of it and see if we can find anything else wrong. Okay, on the screen now is a major problem. I'm gonna give you a second to see if you can find it. It is right here. We've got a completely blown capacitor. It blew out the side right there. Maybe more, but for sure this one. That tells me that there is probably a lot of voltage that went through this, which tells me that somebody who took it apart probably bridged two points that weren't supposed to be bridged and caused a voltage spike that blew out this capacitor. Now, it is possible that that capacitor is the only problem on this board, but it is also possible that voltage went through this capacitor and into other chips on this board. And if that's the case, this board might be toast, but I think what we should do first is replace this capacitor and see if that takes care of the shorts. So what I'm gonna do is remove this capacitor, and then I'm gonna get a capacitor from a known good board. Now, before we solder on a new capacitor, let's see if our short is gone. If the short is gone, there will no, be no beep. If we hear a beep, that means the short is still there. Okay. That's great news. So let's install a known good capacitor. And with that capacitor replaced, let's see what happens when we put our probes on here and see if it's shorted. 320 ohms on one side and one ohm on the other side. That's about what it should be. So I feel like I haven't, I don't see any other problems on this board. So I think now is the time to put this back into the handheld and see if that's all it takes to fix this board. Okay, now we just got to get this motherboard fitted in here. It's almost where it needs to go. It's not quite down in the slots. This ribbon cable needs to be, what are we doing here? There's a little bit of damage on that cable. I don't think it's enough to cause a problem. Okay, I'm going to plug the power button in before I do anything else because I've forgotten that before and it really threw me off. <laughs> okay, let's get a few screws in. All right, now we need to make sure all the buttons and everything are lined up and clicky. Yep, okay, everything's good. Now I just gotta get the rest of these ribbon cables in and screws in, and then we can put the thumbsticks in, the fan and heat sinks, and the battery. Okay, so we've got this all back together. The next move is to reconnect the battery and hopefully nothing explodes. Here we go. Battery. Plugged in. Okay. No smoke, don't see any problems there. All right, let's give it a test. Okay, my finger is over the optical sensor. Let's plug it in. Oh, we got a charge light. That is great news. So I'm gonna let this thing charge for a little bit. I'm gonna get the back cover on and then we'll test it after it's fully charged. But first, let's just try and press the power button again and see what happens. It just turned on. <laughs> okay, I'm still gonna get this fully charged. I'll put the back cover on and then we'll test it again and make sure it all works. I can't believe that just turned on. Let's get the back cover on. There we go. Now this didn't come with the original SSD. I'm using a replacement, so I don't know. I might have to install some software onto this. Okay, and we are in recovery mode. Okay, I'm gonna get the software loaded on and then we'll start it up again and see what happens. Right, and we're almost done downloading, just a little bit more and then we should be able to start this thing up. And there we go, Windows is installed and this ROG Ally 
is now fully working. Let me know in the comments if you think ASUS should have taken this in for a free warranty repair, or whether you think they did the right thing by declining it. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I bought eight broken handheld PCs to see if I can fix those. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix them. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.